Hi everybody, welcome back to another fitness analysis video. In today's video, I'll be talking about the SDLC, which is the software or systems development life cycle. So what does SDLC mean? SDLC really means the phases of work involved in uh, producing a product or developing a software the phases of work involved in uh, delivering a project. Um, so if you, well, in my experience, when I Google SDLC, there are different, um, different explanations to the phases. Some have five phases, some have seven phases. So I'm sure you might get uh, confused if you do these searches, but these aren't necessarily wrong. Uh, they've possibly included um, some other phases within one to reduce it to five but in my experience there are seven main phases of the SDLC which include the planning phase, the analysis phase, uh, design phase, implementation, um, testing, deployment and maintenance. So the first <laughs> The first stage of the SDLC, which is the planning stage, would usually involve planning, planning the project. Um, so the planning stage happens when, um, when an issue or a problem has been, it has been experienced with a system, with a process, with a workflow um, within an organization. So this is where the planning phase begins or the discovery phase where the organization or the stakeholders start to make discussions about what these issues are and how we can um, improve them. What resources do we have? What budget do, do we have? What are the high level issues that we are experiencing and how can we begin to uh, make things better? Um, yeah, so the planning phase is also referred to as the feasibility um, feasibility study. This is where you are studying, you are l sort of analyzing um, the businesses starting to um, look at options or discover various ways in which that system can serve the organization better. Right, so in this stage, the high level requirements are defined. I will give an example of um, a website, a, a new website or an existing website that needs to change. Um, so in this stage, you would have the high level requirements. This is also the stage where the business case is drawn up because in the business case, you are trying to justify the reason for the project. You're trying to justify uh, the resources that you may or may not have, the value that will be added to the organization when, when the change is made. Um, you are trying to look at various options that the organization can consider uh, for these requirements to be met. So I'll give you an example of this um, new website we would look at the high level uh, requirements such as registration login logout these are the, the various things that for example the current uh, website is having issues with we want to change the, the design we want to change the registration process you know these are just starting discussions of that um, project Second stage is the analysis stage uh, and the business, anal the business analyst really, really needs to get involved with this. So in this stage, the team, the project team are looking at defining the requirements um, in a more, more lower level. They're looking at defining current problems. They're looking at identifying what stages of the process or what stages of the end-to-end -end, uh, life cycle of a, a piece of work are um, at what stages are those pain points experienced um, 
uh, and looking at what the uh, expectations are for for those requirements doing all those analyses reading current documents um, reading shadowing um, users of the system trying to really experience and understand the processes um, so the the business analyst will also get involved in workshops you know trying to really draw out those requirements from various um, from various stakeholder points of view or experience uh, looking at the various um, looking at various functions within that organization that that the change will affect um, so in this stage we are defining the requirements in planning stage we also define the requirements so in planning stage we have the high level requirements which will include the epics um, the product owners and business analysts are usually involved in in this uh, stage as well as the project manager uh, in the requirement analysis stage it's mainly the business analyst who gets involved here we've we've we have our business case and we try to draw uh, to map out the business requirements document depending on what methodology um, the project takes on um, so like I said looking at the website yep yeah, we have the registration the login the logout those are our high level in your requirement analysis we are trying to look at the low level in registration epic what are the various sections within that registration to bring our requirements to a much more lower level registration processes usually we will include username on the on the website you need a, a section that has the username um, as an input the password um, checkbox for terms and conditions the submit button um, and the save button right so within planning stage we've identified our epics our high level requirements in analysis stage you are then trying to break down those requirements to uh, a much lower level so that those requirements are met you are interacting with the with the stakeholders to, to understand okay you've mentioned that you want a registration um, part on this website what do those registration section include what would you like to see on the website you know what what uh, how would you define your requirements as done what would what would make you make you um, decide that your requirement has been met so uh, the third stage with it, which is the design phase um, the team are looking at the des the design you know in this instance of the website we're looking at the business rules the um, color codes on the website um, we're starting to um, make decisions based on the architecture and the make of the solution you know um, yeah so in design stage we're looking at the color schemes the um, like that looking at the color schemes the layout the frameworks within that website we're starting to envision what the website will look like this is where prototyping also helps in the previous video I talked about prototyping this is where you now start to design that website it starts to feel more real and true for for the stakeholders you continue to interact with the stakeholders as well in analysis phase you might start to uh, draw out your process maps your current stage your um, pain points your future stage your future state um, processes you're also documenting or creating wireframes right so that's analysis and then design you're starting to bring that true nature of what the requirement is you're looking at the business rules the wireframes the color schemes of the website number four is the implementation stage aka coding or development stage so in this stage this is where the team the dev team starts to 
start to build the software based on the design decisions that have been made, based on all the requirements that you've gathered, based on your prototype, based on your wireframes, and based on discussion as well. Business analyst continues to interact with the dev team uh, in this stage. So the dev team write the codes in the back end. Business analyst doesn't necessarily need to get involved with this. So um, don't be anxious about knowing any technical detail here. As long as you've presented your requirements in a, in a smart format, in a way that the dev team are able to understand, you should be fine. So the implementation stage, really, the business analyst is there as a point of contact to clarify anything that the dev team might need clarification on, but it's mainly the dev team who are working on building the software, building the system, building the website. Um, the UX team as well will continue to plan the interface. So the testers are also analyzing the requirements and creating or writing test scripts at this stage. Um, sometimes the business analyst does uh, the testers work by writing those test cases because as a business analyst you really know what the system should be providing so most business analysts are able to create this but most organizations have testers ready anyway right so number five is the testing stage aka nothing the testing stage is the stage where the qa quality assurance are testing what has been um what has been implemented what the dev team have coded and developed so the qa quality assurance or testing team are there to ensure that the solution uh, passes the quality and assurance uh, for the performance of expected for the performance expected for that uh, system so the qa team will be doing the unit testing the end to end testing as well as um, identifying any bugs within that um, implementation uh, and they will also be reporting these bugs within this stage. Um, uh, also in testing stage, what I've experienced is QA have done their test and then they pass it on as well to the BA because we know the system. Um, so the QA really would test the back end as well as the front end requirements um, and then the BA will go to test the um, front end is when I click on login does it work when I click on uh, username how many characters can I type what are those requirements are they being met as I'm testing that website so the business analyst is also very handy in this stage and if there are any bugs or issues that uh, are highlighted the business analyst will report back to QA who will then fix such bug and then test again so this stage is very important so that the system delivers exactly what the requirements uh, are number six is the deployment stage deployment stage also known as implementation or integration um, so yeah, try not to get too confused or too held up on these words, but let's stick with deployment. In deployment or go live, this is the stage that the, um, the system, the website, the software is deployed into the production environment. Um, design developer tested. So the work has been gathered and now analyzed, uh, developed and tested. So uh, and and then in deployment stage, it's deployed to the end users to start to use the system. So the the links are provided to the users, the apps, the accesses are provided to the users to start to use the system. So our website is live. The website is live. Is that the end of is that the end of the project no there is a final stage which is the maintenance stage so for example or on this website um, the team have to be available in case the website something happens to the website for example um, a lot of users might be logged on once you've gone live all the users are excited to try the website you know 
So a lot of users might be logged on at one time, which will bring, which may bring stress onto the system. Um, however, during your requirements analysis and definition, this should have been tackled, but nothing can be perfect. So we need to be available for whenever there are issues so that we're, we're there to serve, we're there to fix those issues. So in, in effect, the users are able to raise these issues. If they experience any issues, they raise it as a new requirement. And then that requirement starts again from the initial stage of analysis, uh, design, testing. It gets tested again and redone. So uh, maintenance stage is very important because you never know what, what could happen after your deployment stage. I'll go to it in, a, in another, I'll go deeper into it in another video. Um, so in my next video, I'll be expecting a real life project example. I'll be um, talking about a day in the life or a time frame in the life of a project deliverable as a business analyst. I'll give you a real life um, project example. Uh, and then in the video following that, we'll be looking at mapping business processes on actual VCO as well as Lucy chart. So watch out for that video. That's it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, please do subscribe, follow, like and comment. Let me know what you think about today's video and look out for my next one. Peace.